Good morning. This is Pastor Brad at Aldersgate United Methodist Church in Rockford, Illinois, and I'm so glad that you have joined me this Sunday, January 24th, 2021. And yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. In just a little bit, I will share my message with you, Celebrating Death. It may seem odd, and yet it's true, that as followers of God, we need to learn how to celebrate death. One writer said it this way, death is not extinguishing the light. It is putting out the lamp because dawn has come. One could say our death is a graduation to big and better things. So let's begin today to celebrate death. If you have a chance, write to us and let us know that you are watching. You can also receive our daily devotionals by sending your email to us. Our email is just below. Before we get to our message, let's take some time to look at our weekly photos and announcements and then have a word of prayer. May God bless you this day. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, today you are our wisdom and truth. You are our hope and joy, even in the midst of death. Let us, on this special day, give you thanks for all with which you have blessed us. Help us to prevail in the midst of our struggles and grasp your amazing grace to live victoriously. Help us to express your love. Dare us to love those who seem to be unlovable. Once again, we thank you for the precious gift of life that leads us to your throne. Yes, time is in your hand, and so is our souls. Reign among us this day, I pray. So on this day, we call upon you in the name of Jesus Christ to be our anchor and our rock, the rock of our faith in all that we say and all that we do. For those who are sick, we ask for your healing. For those who struggle with emotional issues, we ask for your peace. For those who struggle with relationships, we ask for your mercy. And for those who struggle in life, we ask you to be with them in their valley of darkness. Now, as we open the Bible once again, for the first time, uncover our eyes that we may see, allow us to hear the truth, and may our hearts receive all that you have for us this day. We pray this in Christ's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is found in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. He will wipe every tear from your eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. May the blessings be upon the reading of God's word this day. Amen. Today, I would like to talk with you about celebrating death. This may sound like an oxymoron. Who in the right mind would want to celebrate death? Is it not true that death is our last enemy? Something to fight, something to avoid? Certainly, we are all going to die, but who in the right mind really wants to die or see a loved one die? I like what Henry Nouwen once said on this matter about death, and I think he's right. This is a piece he wrote after his near-death experience. <clears throat> the way my friends reacted to my recovery caused me to reflect on the way life and death are perceived in our society. Unanimously, they congratulated on my restoration to health and, and expressed their gratitude that I was doing so well again. Although I was deeply grateful for their attention and affection, the encounter with God in my hours near death made me wonder whether being better again was indeed the best thing for me. Would it not have been preferable to have been completely set free from this ambiguous world and taken home to full communion with God? Life on earth, painful and unhappy as it may be, seems more preferable to my friends than the fulfillment of God's promise beyond the limits of death. I don't say this with any cynicism. I know all too well that I am no different from my friends. But having had a glimpse beyond the mirror of life, I now wonder if our eagerness to hold on to this life does not suggest that we have lost contact with one of the essential aspects of our creed, the faith of eternal life. Do you remember that song? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Really? Is it a day of victory? Is it really a day of rejoicing? Do I, do you, really believe that? Are you really excited to be with God, which the Bible says is far better than what's down here? So maybe Henry Nouwen is correct. Maybe you have lost connection with one of the essential aspects of your Christian faith, your faith in eternal life. There is no question that death is a bitter, yes, a very bitter experience. When a loved one leaves us, its roots are deep and it can be painful. And the Bible doesn't deny this reality either. Um, for example, <clears throat> we can read in the Bible where the author of the book of Revelation describes the end of the world as we know it, when the followers of God will see a new heaven and new earth. It describes a new Jerusalem coming down out of the sky, and as the followers of God are watching this beautiful city descend, they hear 
these words, Revelations chapter 21, verses 3 and 4. See, the new home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. As we can see, it's quite natural to grieve the death of a loved one or even your own impending death. But for a Christian, there is a promise. There is a day when all of your tears will be wiped away. So, for a believer, there is both weeping and celebration. But what you may not understand is that your celebration of death does not begin when you get up there. Rather, it begins down here with the gift of life that has been given to you. No matter how long or how short it may be, everyone needs to celebrate. What I'm saying is this. Death is not your enemy, but death is your friend. Right here, right now, you have a life to live to its fullest. So celebrate by living it. Live today like it's your last. Make your life here on earth a party that you will never forget. Don't mope around with the poor old me complex, but party now because of the gift you have been given to live life now. It may not be perfect. In fact, <clears throat> it might even be a little painful and you might want out, but celebrate what you have. You may not have a lot of money, <clears throat> but what you have is yours. It belongs to you. It is your life and it is your party to celebrate. It's true. Bob Perks tells a beautiful story about a young girl who received a gift from her grandmother who passed away. The family had gathered together for a family celebration. It wasn't her birthday, anniversary, or birth. They were celebrating death. That's right, celebrating dying. For Amy, the young girl, it meant getting the best gift ever. You see, Amy was very close to her grandmother. They visited often and shared some of the most memorable moments. When she was very small, they played together, walked together. And when Amy was sick, grandmother would stay with her so mom and dad could go to work. So they loved each other in all situations and prayed together to resolve their deepest concern. Like the time when Amy fell while she was carrying her mom's best vase. Without hesitation, Amy turned to her grandmother and said, it's prayer time. You see, Amy thought that her grandma had a much better way of praying and, and a way of bringing healing and fixing things as God did, maybe even more. That's how much Amy trusted her grandmother. Their love could withstand anything that life would throw their way. But it was inevitable. There would certainly come a time when reality of an old age would gain the upper hand. This time, Grandma couldn't kiss it to make it better. Grandma couldn't pray this one away. You see, Grandma was dying. It was her time. And what a splendid time it was. It was spring, and the flowers that Grandma and Amy attended to each year were in full bloom. You might think that this is a perfect time to be alive. But Grandma convinced Amy otherwise. 
At 91, she had lived a full life. She had no regrets, except perhaps leaving Amy alone. But she had taken care of that too. Amy, Grandma whispered quietly, in my closet at home, there is a small wooden box. It has your name on it. In the box is all that I can give you. All that I hold dear. In that box is the secret to living a long life. Now, she didn't have a fortune there for her. She had no diamonds or pearls to pass on. What she left was her secret of life. On her final day, she called Amy by her side. They reflected back on a lifetime of love, happiness, and commitment. They laughed and they cried, and before saying goodbye, Grandma pulled her close, kissed her on the forehead, and gently fell into a deep and final sleep. A sleep that would take her home to the greatest celebration of all. Weeks after her passing, Amy retrieved the box from Grandma's closet. She took it out to the kitchen table where they shared many happy moments together. Placing the old wooden box on the table, she carefully opened it. There inside, Amy found an envelope with these words, my secret to a long life. Her heart raced with the thought that Grandma had gone through all of this trouble just for her. She held the note close to her chest and said out loud, I love you, Grandma. Thank you. It was a gift that Amy wouldn't trade for anything. Inside the envelope was one index card. On it was written four words. Live until you die. Amy roared with laughter. She ran out of the house and down the street to where her mom was. There, the two of them sat and laughed until it hurt. Somewhere in that laughter, Amy and her mom decided to hold a special celebration every year. The big day was the day Grandma died. Everyone who knew and loved Grandma would come home for the big event, no matter where life had taken them. Bob Perks reflects, there is a profound truth in those simple words. For I have found many who have long ago died in spirit and hope, yet continue to breathe. For Amy and her family, it's not a secret anymore. It's a celebration. It is for this reason the Bible encourages readers, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who do not have hope. Did you hear that? Grieve, yes, but grieve with hope. Celebrate and live until you die. I will be honest with you, there are those times When my son's death really drags me down. And usually this is when it catches me off guard. A song, memory, note left in a box or drawer. 
But in those moments of great sadness, I move ahead with my eyes fixed on the author and the finisher of my faith, living my faith to its fullest, celebrating what I had with my son and the life that I have yet to live for God. And yes, there will be a day when I will see him again. But until that day, I will celebrate by living until I die. Let me give you five steps for celebrating death. Number one, be authentic with your feelings. It's okay to say, I feel sad. But then remember all the good times you had with your loved one and focus on your new life moving forward. Number two, plan a party with others family, friends, to celebrate your loved one's life. Tell stories, laugh and cry. Number three, this may sound a little odd, but talk with your loved one. He or she may be gone from this earth here as we know it, but they are always in your heart. I often picture my dad and my son in heaven looking down and cheering me on. Four, plant a tree or maybe a garden in memory of your loved one. Reach out to others who have lost loved ones with a card or with a helping hand. Become a wounded healer. And remember this, there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. God loves you just the way you are. I want to thank you for being with me today, and I hope this message has helped you out so that you can live the life that God has given you by the things you say and the things you do. Please be with us next Sunday when I will bring you the message, Celebrating Children. Again, write to us. We would love to hear from you. Our email is just below. And now for our benediction. May the roads rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face and the snow fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the hole of his hand. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.